Seth, I really want to know what the nature of reality is. So I'm talking to people. Some people tell me it's the laws of physics. Others would have me believe in God. You tell me that it's information, not, not information that's representing reality, but, rep, but information that is reality. How can that be? Yeah, yeah, Robert, at bottom, it's bits. You know, a bit of information is the smallest possible chunk of information. It represents the distinction between two possibilities, or yes, no. Head or tail. True or false. <laughs> yeah. Or zero or one, as right. we normally call it in a computer. Right. And to have a bit, all you have to have is something that has two possible states. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, if I take a uh, nuclear spin, the, the nucleus of an atom, mm -hmm. like a proton in the center of a hydrogen atom, it can be spinning like that, mm -hmm. or it can be spinning around like that. Mm -hmm. And because and, we live in a right-handed society, <laughs> in our dextrocentric world, we call that spin up and spin down. That's a bit of information. I mean, we're sitting here, we've got a bunch of quantum computers here, actually inside these quantum computers, all the little protons are registering and flipping bits of information. So when it goes from spinning this way to spinning that way, the bit flips. At bottom, everything is essentially composed of information. Well, it sounds that that information is something that the, the thing is doing as opposed to the information being the thing. Do I get that right? <laughs> yeah, well, so, so, <laughs> so, so uh, you could say, yeah, so everything carries with it bits of information, okay. all right? All right. So that, that's fine. I think that's pretty uncontroversial. Right. Right. Right? Right. So, so uh, you know, proton up, zero, proton spinning down, one. Right. Okay, so everything has bits of information. Yeah. So there's nothing that exists that doesn't carry information. Exactly. Okay. Right. That's right. You know, that makes sense. Right. Not to carry information, you'd have not to exist, okay. right? You would, nothing, okay. nothing has no states, and so it doesn't carry information. Okay, okay. good. So, but as long as you exist, then you, you carry information. I'm making progress. All right, so, but now your question was, is it really made out of information? Yeah. Well, okay, so let's say what it's made out of. So you look more and more closely right. at a proton, and you find that there are various kinds of information that characterize it. It's got electric charge, mm -hmm. right? Sure. It's got this, because it's spinning, and it's got electric charge, it's got a little magnet. Magnets, yeah. That's why we're talking with him <laughs> with these superconducting magnets right, right here. Don't get too close, your right, credit no, no, card no. will be wiped. <laughs> yeah, I already right. removed them from my pockets. Right, right. <laughs> right? So, so as you try to look closer and closer to say, what is there beyond information? Mm -hmm. Okay, you look closer, you find another bit of information that characterizes a proton, say right. it's got spin, it's composed of quarks, each of the quarks has spin, each of them has charge. You look closer and closer, you find more bits of information, but at some point, you find no more information, that the information stops, the information is finite. And you've described everything. And you've described everything, so what is it if not information? Okay. So let's just take a proton. How many bits of information would you need to describe a proton? Yeah, so, so there's a, a where it is, let's say. So yeah. to locate one proton in the universe, you know, yeah. within this whole universe, right. there's 13, what, around 20 billion light years yeah. across. Well, let's see, I'd have to, let me do a little calculation. I think probably take on the order of maybe like uh, 70 or 80 bits, something like that. And that would characterize everything that you can say. About where it is. About where it, oh, where it is, okay. About where it is, and then, okay. then, then there are a few more, a few maybe another 10 bits or so to characterize as it spin, right, right, all right? right. Actually, that's probably pretty much it, because once you have a proton, then it can either be spinning up or spinning down, so right. let's say about 50 or 60 bits okay. plus one. Okay, okay. And that's it. Right. And there isn't anything more to say about this proton. Let's now go to the opposite extreme. Let's look at the whole universe and look at it as, a, as if it were information. As if? What do you mean <laughs> as if? Okay, 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 <laughs> all right, yeah. it is, it is, you got me, it is, it is. So, so the universe is now information, the whole thing. How much is there? How can we begin to understand the universe as a, 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 a finite, it's not infinite, numbers of information. How can we begin to even understand that question? Yeah, so, so actually, ironically, we know more about how much information the universe holds and about how it's processing that information 
than we do about, say, the origin of life. Yeah, right? Right, so right. <laughs> we go on these cosmic scales, we can say very precisely how much information okay. is out there. So okay. the universe is, you know, 13.8 billion years old. Seven, People, they tell me, but that's yeah, okay. They, 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 they're always changing their story. <laughs> yeah, but, right, right. you know, they went a few years ago, they went from, from it being somewhere between 10 and 50 to being 13.8 right, right, or 13.9. Right, 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 so, okay, right, now we're right, getting closer. Right. Okay, so it's around, um, um, I don't know, on the order of, 20 billion light years from here to the what we call the edge of the universe mm -hmm. or the horizon. So um, the horizon, that's all the stuff that we could ever know anything about. So let's ask how many bits of information are in the horizon, but what people conventionally yeah, call Beyond it that, it's, we can never see it. Whatever is there, we'd have no idea because it's, uh, light can't travel that fast in that period of time, so it's beyond our ken. Right. And, and it's stuff that we, if there is, inf there is information out there maybe, but it's not stuff we need to worry okay, about. Fine. Okay. So we'll keep it to what we can see. Yeah. So it's actually not that hard to figure out how much information is in the universe. Okay, go for because, it. Because, well, I mean, we just count elementary particles. Like, okay. you know, our proton had maybe 50 or 60 bits of information. And then uh, we can actually count the number of elementary particles in the universe. So within the universe, there's around, I don't know, something like... Um, ten, 10 to the 80th. Yeah, to so. about 10 to the 80 protons. Yeah. And... Um, uh, uh, each one with a few tens of bits of information. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then on top of that, there's around um, another, uh, around, there's around 10 to the 90th photon. Right, so there's, right. uh, you know, there's all, this, all these little particles of light out in the cosmic black body yeah. radiation. Yeah, about a billion more than protons, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So when you count the number of bits in conventional matter, but just, this is just ordinary, run-of-the-mill physics has been known for almost 100 years how to do this counting, mm -hmm. accounting of bits of information. <laughs> um, you find that there are around 10 to the 90 bits in ordinary matter. And, and the first uh, feeling I had when I saw that in your work is that's all. Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. Well, there might be more. So, so if you have weird matter like this dark energy stuff oh, that okay. seems to be pervading everything, cold dark matter, yeah. so the remaining, you know, 95% or so or 94% of whatever is out there, yeah. that might have another around 10 to the 120 bits. But all, to, all together. All together, but that's the maximum that you could possibly cram into our universe. And is that uh, 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 on a static basis, like right, right now, or, or defining it, or is that a historical basis from the beginning of the Big Bang, this 13.7 billion years ago, the, the, the total history of our universe is con contained within that? Yeah, so actually this, this um, you know, this, this dark energy, one way to think about it is that it's, um, if it contains this information, all these extra bits, these bits are very slow moving. Uh -huh. If you look how much energy each bit has, it's had time to flip once oh. since the Big Bang. Oh, gee. So let's say it's <laughs> not doing very much. Okay. Right? All right. Meanwhile, you know, energy in the protons or in the, the these uh, or in the photons and the back bo black body yeah, radiation, those sense. bits are flipping really fast. Sure, sure. So, so in fact, you can also count the number of times bits have flipped. Uh -huh, so uh -huh. we know how many bits there are and we know how many times they flipped. And in fact, you do the calculation of how many bit flips have taken place <laughs> since the Big Bang, and you find that that's also around 10 to the 120. Wow. You know, a big number, but, but as you say, like, you so know, I can it, think of much bigger numbers right, than that, right? Right, right. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, a, that's a big number. We don't have a name for it. It's bigger than a so-called Google with 100 zeros, but it's, it's, uh, you know, it's manageable within our conception. It, it's, that seems incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is that what's all? The I mean, what's the implication of all of this? I mean, is this just interesting and fun, or is, the, is there some serious, deep meaning to it? It's just interesting and fun. <laughs> no, no, what do you mean? Oh, oh, serious, deep meaning comes only from things that are interesting well, and fun. Well, that's a good point. I like that. I like that. Well, that, that's right. That's right. Yeah, in fact, you know, the, the reason to doing science is that it's interesting and fun, and then every now and then some little piece of serious, deep meaning comes along accidentally, typically.